Welcome back, gangies. Today we're back once again. It feels like we're not. It feels like we didn't do the last session quite too long ago. But yesterday, I'm not gonna lie, we kind of cooked. Uh, we wrote a backtracking algorithm. I couldn't tell you how long it takes or how fast it is or how much space it takes. Uh, I just couldn't tell you, to be honest. But maybe that's something we'll figure out over time. That'll be interesting to see with all the advancement in AI stuff. If, you know, interview questions like this will even be needed going forward. But I'm sure to some degree we're going to be steering these machines in some facets. So if anything, we have to know what things are and how they're used. And if we can't quite code them ourselves. Either way, it's probably going to be requiring some sort of literacy. So I'll slot all of this under programming literacy. Fortunately, kind of really out of the domain of anything that makes sense because will one truly ever be down in the deep end of stuff like this? Probably unlikely. But I want to start scheduling some time to sit down with CGPT and just have it tutor me stuff. I've already been doing that for some game dev stuff I'm working on. It's helping me learn pretty quickly. But I probably need to do some prompt management uh, just to help, it, help me learn a little bit better. So we're going to try and figure out the time complexity of the algorithm we wrote today. Uh, hopefully with chat GPT, we'll see how it goes. Because um, I have no idea where to start when it comes to figuring out the time complexity of backtracking algorithms. That being the case, that's where we are. Also, uh, we probably won't be uploading daily videos anymore starting on Sunday. I mean, starting on Monday, I think I'm just going to be recording. Uh, I think the format's going to change a little bit, but I'm sort of excited about it and we'll see how it goes, you know, because there's always some room for some change. So TLDR, uh, death and destruction surround us every day. And not much we can do but move forward. Fortunately, we have the developers over at Lico to help guide us. I mean, to help get in our way. And we have our friends and family over in the hyperbolic coding chamber who are helping us, who are guiding us and helping us fight back. So hopefully we can make some sense of this. But I think we do have one comment today for someone who's ready to help us move to the next level. I have no, I actually don't know. Okay, we do have a comment. So we do have a comment today by Anthony Bryson, and I think this may be the best profile picture we've seen yet. It's kind of fire, actually. So we might have to steal that. Uh, thank you for your contribution. This is now our profile picture. Do you plan to have a VODs channel down the line? That sounds pretty cool. VODs, video on demand. VODs. Sounds pretty cool. Is VOD's channel basically a Kip Clips channel? I feel like VODs come from streams. We basically do a stream of thought here. I'm sure if the series got more popular, people would want to watch the daily videos again. Oh, or maybe both both the daily videos and the weekly supercut. <laughs> weekly supercut sounds like a cool thing. Sounds like a cool name of a game. I'm sure, it's hard to edit videos and make them entertaining every week, especially when most of the content is sit down focused. True, but I think that'll be part of the challenge. I'm just going to give it a try. I just realized I'm not uh not switching the format because the views uh have changed. One thing I kind of wanted to do with the channel was to uh going despite the effort. So I feel like there are a lot of chances to improve the video quality uh and just do general quality control. I've done the complete opposite. I think the recording part in the beginning helped me stay accountable. I think I can stay accountable now. What's kind of getting in the way of me doing it every day recently is the recording. Also, I would like to try my hand at some video editing and I don't really want to do any new style content. And I feel like this is a way to do what I'm doing, but try a different way. So that's what I'm thinking of. But yeah, I don't know if, uh, yeah, I think of it like a playground or a sandbox. So who knows what will happen? We might just start uploading league content. 
or we might just yeah who knows <laughs> but yeah yeah another reason i wanted to do the channel i wanted it to be uh uh, I originally started because Ivan Jerk uploaded the every squat every day videos. Those videos are pretty cool. And he usually does uh what he usually does is his workout and then cut over he talks over uh the video, which makes sense. I'm doing sort of a live version of that, which can be quite difficult sometimes because ebbs and flows of existence and whatnot, TLDR. But it'll be interesting. We shall see. Honestly, it might also be that on Monday we just do what we keep doing. But I feel kind of excited to try some uh, different stuff. So we'll see how it goes. <clears throat> but yeah, I don't really have a ton of plans. I kind of just have an idea and I try it. So, And then uh, hopefully the plan will show it. Hopefully the thing that I'm trying to do will come out if it doesn't uh yeah we'll just try the next thing but both the daily videos and the weekly supercut that seems that seems even more difficult i guess another inter another cool part of this is that in terms of effort uh the weekly supercut versus daily thing is an e almost an equivalent amount of work. I think another thing that was cool with the daily video thing, I think it got me used to just kind of talking nonsense. So, uh, there was a difficulty with that, and I think that has changed. Or I've become, I've become habituated to the difficulty. So, before sitting down and editing a weekly Supercut video, oof, count me out. But now I think I could probably sit down and do it. Or hopefully we'll have some AI tools to pretty much do it for us. So that would be ideal. Pick a couple tracks. Have it do the dirty work. But yeah. Oh yeah, and uh, I forgot to mention. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the, the daily videos... To me, it's. Cl I don't think the daily videos. I've known. I've known this for a little while, but I was thinking about. Uh, <laughs> there's been a couple of videos in the past called called the viewer hostility, <laughs> and I think that is definitely what's happening here. As it's not lost on me, it maybe the last 190, the last 200 videos. No, last 240 videos are viewer hostile. You know, for the first 80 or so videos, I had access to a better mic. I just didn't use one. Uh, had access to better video, didn't use one. Was keeping it was trying to keep it simple and easy to do. Didn't feel like setting anything up. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't think there's a lot of value in the daily videos. I knew that from the start, and I, I'm okay with it. Because part of the thing I wanted to do, I kind of just wanted to show up on camera and kind of force myself to stay consistent while also trying to use leak code as a vehicle to train focus. So it wasn't lost on me that there wasn't a lot of value proposition for viewers. But uh, I always I always named that when I know it, when I when I've talked about it, I always called it viewer hostility because I feel like it is pretty antagonizing to the viewer because uh, I don't really like try to add too much value to, to, the, to the video. It's very, very, very like super low effort. There's not even a soundtrack playing right now. I'm mostly just blasting this into the void. But. Thought I might try Supercut editing. I've edited videos in the past and it seemed kind of fun. And yeah, there's an aspect to the daily recording that is a little bothersome that I can see uh, could affect how much 
could affect the practice going forward that I want to try and rectify. So, yeah, I really appreciate this comment. It seems like the perfect comment for the perfect time. This is really the perfect comment for the perfect moment. People... Yeah, I think it'll be interesting. I think it'll be interesting. I'm, I'm mostly just going to try a bunch of nonsense. And another reason I want to do the weekly supercut thing with, I would say it's the same effort. And it is the same effort because doing sitting down to record these videos is a lot of effort for me for some reason. Not really certain why. Maybe because my brain is dysfunctional. Uh, but I wondered if I channeled, you know, the seven recording sessions into you know one editing session maybe the outcome maybe the output would be something i'm a little more proud of but also i'd just like to try different stuff tldr we just be seeking novelty tldr but yeah i don't even realize i don't even know what i talked about for 11 minutes but i have no idea what we just wasted 11 minutes on but Yeah. So today, I appreciate that comment, brother. HCC appreciates you. We have combination sum, which we solved yesterday. The runtime is quite dog. I'm going to think a little bit about how this makes any sense at all. We're going to lock in for 25 minutes. And additionally, we're going to ask our buddy CGPT to help us figure this out. So I'm going to pause real quick. Okay, so we back once we back once again, big dogs. Uh, we have combination sum. We're going to see if we can make this make any sense at all. Combination sum is pretty much given an array of distinct integers, candidates, and at target integer target. Return a list of all unique combinations of candidates. For the chosen numbers sum to target, you may return the combinations in any order. With the chosen numbers sum to target, right? You may return the combinations in any order, and you can also the same number may be chosen from candidates an unlimited number of times. Two combinations are unique if the frequency of at least one of the chosen numbers is different. The test cases are generated such that the number of unique combinations that sum Test cases are generated such the number of unique combinations that sum up to target is less than 150 combinations for the given input. So, basically, there are some constraints here that are very, very applicable to backtracking. So, I didn't realize this, and this, maybe this is one takeaway from this problem. Maybe problems that seem like we could be forced to do an exhaustive search, we can apply some heuristics or some optimizations to simplify the solution space. I don't know. But they seem to have sort of helped here tldr we're given a list of numbers and a target we can use any combinations of numbers as long as, as long as there is at least one number we can use any number any number of times and we have to see how many different ways we can create target the way we do it is we just backtrack through the entire array right and we choose the numbers at max since our, con our candidate length is 30 integers constrained Right, we can conclude that our recursion depth will be at max 30 layers deep, maybe. Which isn't too bad. And if our sum is greater, since another thing we can take advantage of, the candidate numbers are only positive. So they go between 2 and 40. So whenever our sum is greater than target, we can safely assume that no other number we will add can make us less than target. And this is really important. Because if there were negative numbers, it would mean we couldn't. It would mean we wouldn't be able to stop immediately and go backwards. So we can see that's pretty much what we've done here. The time complexity of this, in the worst case, given a length of thirty candidates, I feel like the time complexity would be.
thing's actually dummy slow, which is crazy. I also do feel like this portion has a lot to do with the slowness. Let me go over all the created combinations again. Maybe instead of revisiting all the combinations, we could do something up here to optimize what we don't even know what our initial speed is. I think we could do that. We could comment out answer. And we'll return combinations instead. Copy this stuff. Uh, we can take set, declare it up here, uncomment it, and we'll pass it in. Call it scene combination instead. Mm. And we'll add scene combination with a set of strings. Right, if current sum equals target we're not going to do every combination do combinations dot push a copy of the current array Set to scene combination. We're going to want to return. And pass scene combination. Back in this seems marginally faster To probably also abstract out the current array func the R to ID function. Starting would take n log to n log n time. These are all op yeah. These are I'm only I, yeah. Starting takes n log n time. We could probably do a version. That lets us know if this is unique or not. Less time, probably with an app. Either no, there's no way because you'd have to sort the items output.
Well, actually... If we sorted our starting array, if we sorted our starting array, then we wouldn't have to constantly sort an R to ID. means the numbers that we would have already be sorted. Hmm. All right. I think it might be time to pace this baby in the sea. GPT. 
Okay, so pretty much this is where we're at. I'm gonna use the same prompt I used before. Uh, I have written a problem. Make sure my solution actually works. <sighs> Let's see if this makes any sense. Yeah, it's clear to me that comp sort the uh I messed up actually. Uh don't need to sort the candidates. I'm gonna delete that line from the prompt. And this should still work. Interesting. In general, the time complexity of the backtrack function is 2 to the n, where n is the length of the candidates array. n is the length of the candidates array. This is because, in the worst case, the function will generate all possible combinations. Time complexity of your solution is too tricky because it depends on the input values of the candidates and target parameters. In general, the time complexity of the backtrack function is n. And as length of the candidates are right. This is because in the worst case, the function will generate all possible combinations of the candidates that's not the target. However, there are some optimizations you can make to improve the performance of the algorithm. First, using a set called scene combination to keep track of the unique combinations that have already been generated. This avoids generating duplicate combinations. I don't think it avoids gen. Oh, it does. But we still do the work to get there. This is always generating duplicate combinations and reduces the number of recursive calls made by backtrack. I don't think that's true. Actually, it does because I guess you would have kept going. Otherwise, when we see it, we don't we don't do any work. Because, for example, if there was a target called, if we had two, two, three, well, no, that's mostly a function of targets of returning when some is greater than target. Ah, two-dimensional array that stores generated combinations. The maximum size of this array is 150 combinations. As per the problem statement, that's true. Wait. 
Let me check. Oh, it's less than 150 combinations for the given input. I don't think 150 times n is correct. I don't know. This is better than what I would write. So. What are some ways we can optimize? I can't figure out another way to and find another way to this think defy each. And we have to simplify each group of nut each the R two ID wording. Wording is a lot of time here. Only readable I can check if I have a group of numbers or How does this hash function create a unique identifier? Define a hash function that maps each combination to a unique identifier. Nums dot reduce. I think reduce turns one thing into one value or something like that. Accumulator. Ack plus num dot two string. I don't think this is valid code. Actually, I don't. Act plus num dot two string comma per. Oh no, the comma is for the addition, initial reduce uh, or, or the secondary and reduce parameter. I've seen this replace the set with a map called scene combination, which maps each combination identifier to a Boolean value indicating whether it has been seen before.
a concatenation of the string representation would not work. Because if we had 2, 2, 7, and 7, 2, 2, They would be seen as different values here. What is this thing on about? Okay, now my website. Okay. The code just down. Okay, looks like it's back up. Yeah, I figured this wouldn't work. This doesn't make much sense. The values wouldn't be unique. What is this thing on about? I probably should have pasted in the solutions for a better guided answer. I guess let's check the editorial. This is one of the problems in a series of combination sum. They can all be solved with the same algorithm, backtracking. For tackling this problem, we could recommend one to start with another almost identical problem called combination sum three. Arguably easier, one can switch the solution a bit to solve this problem. For the sake of this article, we will present the backtracking algorithm. Furthermore, we will list some of them. We're finding all or some solutions to some computational problems. The idea that it incrementally builds candidates to the Oh, okay. I didn't know backtracking would meant it immediately abandons a can. Oh, yeah, that's why I called backtrack. I think I would confuse. Okay. Looks like backtrack is a subcomponent of exhaustive. Maybe. Specifically to our problem, we could incrementally build a combination. Okay, I think we'll stop there. It's like 37 minutes. Tomorrow we'll read the solution.